Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 371. We're <clears throat> looking at a lesson I titled, Events to Come. Things that are manifesting around the world, which will lead to the time of the beginning of sorrows great judgment to fall on the human race. Scripture teaches just before the beginning of sorrow's judgment, the world will experience a global buildup toward war. Luke 21 verse 9. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. So what we're looking at is exactly this scripture taking place. There's a worldwide buildup toward <clears throat> uh, global hostility, global war, which people are thinking at this point, this is it. All, all the atomic war is going to break out. The human race is going to be wiped out, and everything is going to um, end. No, we haven't even begun. What's being said is the Lord saying, "When you see these things, don't be caught up in a fear motive motif. Don't be terrified, because from a human perspective, it will bring fear." terror to the average individual observing this, but it's just the initial stages of what's going to transpire. So since you've said that, should we understand mm -hmm. that the spirit of fear or various spirits which include or exude fear, I should say, have been deployed by not just the father, but the enemy? Certainly. Mm. Oh yes, definitely. Uh, because <clears throat> the spirits feed off of human emotion. So, Mr. Jones, mm -hmm. obviously we're being warned not to, so that means it's going to happen and we have to have the ability to repel the fear. Mm -hmm. yes. How do we do that? Through faith. Faith? Faith. Saying? Knowing that God is in control. And He is with Knowing us. that these things aren't going to end up the way it seems. And having a confidence that you know what the Word says. And God is going to engineer things according to his plan, not according sure. to men's sure. Sure. egregious activities on the earth. So this brings into account uh, the message of Ephesians 6 in applying all the armor of God constantly. Yes. What we know is that events are building toward a climax. But God is in control. God is going to be the one to engineer the climax. He's going to be the one to call the shots uh, as far as the conditions are going to be permitted to expand Amen. in this situation. We're going to read some scriptures that point this out. <clears throat> Scripture teaches Israel will be engaged in continuous conflict leading to the time of intervention of Elohim to judge her, Israel's enemies. Turn to Ezekiel 32, verse 32. As we're turning, is there any indication as to the period of time from when Israel appears to be being engaged through to the intervention of Elohim to judge her enemies? Um... Not so, we gauge basically by events rather mm. than a time period. Okay. Because the word lets us know this is going to be drawn into a protracted, protracted period of conflict with her enemies, which is going to build up, build up, build up until total uh, immersion of vitriolic hatred on the part of her enemies to wipe her out takes place. 
we can gauge the degree of this by understanding that where we are now is only in entering into a limited period of her enemies interacting with her. Okay. Right now, people are saying, well, you got Hezbollah, you got Iran, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the United States going to war, and, you know, that's going to spread worldwide. No. According to the scriptures, other things have to happen. I was thinking of um, Egypt being a time marker, moving from the position of moderate through to the position of just short of being a terrorist nation. Egypt, what are your thoughts on that? Jordan. Well, specifically Egypt because of the general and the fact that they are moderate. Yes, but you have the moderate nations. Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia okay. all have to be drawn in. It hasn't happened yet. Sure. So we're looking at, we're just on the cusp mm. here of the intensity of things. And remember what we said the last time we talked about this, the scripture strongly infers an intervention on the part of God. God is going to, he's going to direct, Elo, uh, now Elohim is going to direct wives VH to a, an intervention, but it won't be an overt intervention where you say, oh, that's, that's wives VH. Right. No, he's going to manipulate situations to take place. We're going to see some scriptures along that line. Ezekiel 32, verse 32. For I have caused my terror in the land of the living. So what this is stating that this is this is the intervention on the part of um, of Elohim directing YHVH okay. to do certain things that are going to mitigate man's intention, so to speak. I've caused my terror in the land of the living, and he shall be laid in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that are slain with the sword, even Pharaoh and all his multitudes, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. So what's happening here, you can see the two opposing forces, Satan inciting, inciting, inciting. God limiting until he's ready to pronounce the time in which all destruction is going to be allowed to take place. Why are we hearing Pharaoh's name specifically here in verse 17? Because the chapter is about Pharaoh, about okay. Egypt and its influence, which is the last aspect of what you were just saying. When you see Egypt getting involved, when you see Jordan, Moab, Ammon, when okay. you see them getting, it's toward the end, uh, which is actually, when they get involved, you're going to have the pronouncement of the beginning of sorrows. At that point, to what degree have the diaspora Israelites reverted back to Israel? They haven't. They haven't started yet. They don't come back until all the collapse takes place. Oh, 32. Okay. So then, so what, what chapter does to, that go into? Uh, that's Deuteronomy 30, 32. Okay. At the, the gathering. Right. So what you're looking at here the chess pieces are being moved. You have an you have an initiation of hostilities, but the nations that are going to comprise the daughters of the famous nations, just a fraction of them are currently involved. You don't have Turkey, you don't have uh, Jordan, you don't have Egypt, you don't really have Russia, you don't have Syria yet. All you have right now is Lebanon and Iran is actively and you get Yemen and these around there actually there's the seven individuals that are being stirred mm. but the majority of them haven't become active yet so even though we're hearing I guess you would call it brinksmanship from uh, the Turkish leadership that's me chattering there's no intent yeah. because the Bible is telling us there's no yet intention yet. matter of fact looking at um, uh, this guy commentary. He was saying that Turkey is reluctant. They really don't want to get involved. <clears throat> but they're being forced to by the pressure of the Arab bloc. 
Now, this is the next principle. <coughs> Scripture indicates individual as well as collective judgments will fall on Israel's enemies. So we're going to see incremental, we just read it, my terror on the nations in the land of the living. You're going to have things take place which are going to slow down the progression of the totality of the amalgamation against Israel. Israel right now is holding its own. It's uh, taking down a lot of the opposition. Uh, Hamas is a wreckage. Uh, Gaza is a desolation. They don't present a threat to her to the degree that they used to. And she feels strong enough now to turn on Lebanon, uh, turn on Hezbollah to the north and take on Iran if necessary. So she's still in a position where she can call the shots. Mm -hmm. uh, turn to Ezekiel 28. Verse, we're going to read verses 21 to 24. Son of man, set thy face against Zidon and prophecy against it. Zidon is a region, ancient Zidon was a, a city which uh, ultimately it, um, advanced tremendously. It had a lot of influence, uh, influenced Israel to a great degree. It, it is currently the region where Hezbollah is. Okay, interesting. Off of uh, the, the south of Lebanon. Lebanon right. Son of man, set thy face against Zidon, and prophecy against it, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Zidon, and I will be glorified in the midst of thee, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So this is YHVH. <clears throat> when I shall have executed judgments in her, and shall be sanctified in her. For I will send into her pestilence and blood into her streets, and the wounded shall be judged in the midst of her by the sword upon her on every side. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So the wording shall be sanctified in her. Should we understand that this is YHVH referring to him cleansing that nation? Him being acknowledged. <clears throat> I don't know that I did it. And uh, basically... <clears throat> That's his, that's his uh, game plan about the whole thing. He wants recognition. So what he's doing now, and you notice what he goes on to say in verse 24. There shall be no more a prickling briar unto the house of Israel. What does that mean? The word prickling briar comes from a Hebrew term, salin, salon, meaning destructive thorn. So there shall be no more a destructive thorn unto the house of Israel. That's what Hezbollah has been. It's been a threat on her northern border. And he goes on, nor any grieving thorn in, of all that are round about them, and despised that despised them, Israel, and they shall know that I am the Lord God. So what you're finding here, things are going to happen which appear to be things that YHVH are going to bring against not in a collective judgment but people, nations being singled out for specific hardships that will take the pressure off of Israel for a particular time. Slowing down what would ordinarily automatically be a collective massive wave of destruction that would come they're never going to be allowed to wipe Israel out collectively right. Right. so things are going to happen to keep the unity from reaching a point of completion now what you see currently the alliance between Hezbollah in Iran, in the Syrian 
Maria isn't going to be allowed to culminate um, in a unified uh, way in which total destruction will come on Israel. This is going to prevail in this situation, and I don't think at this point the inference of Scripture does not point to an all-out war, all-out war between Israel and Iran in America. Didn't we see Hezbollah and Hamas leaders meet in China to sign some form of pact? Or were these two groups from the Gaza area? Both. So Both. Hezbollah and Hamas, Hamas yeah. and then Hamas and then some other group also from Gaza, all signed yeah, together. Because you have a unified uh, group there. They, they do things, actually they're Iran's proxies. So sure. They're going to do things that Iran sure. has sure. signaled them to but do. But the point you're making is that even though they've you know, <coughs> signed this, that and the other, they won't be allowed to physically... They're going to things, good, things are going to hinder unified. this. Because you find two things. The destruction that comes on Iran is going to take place Ezekiel 38 and 39. It's called the Ran there. Here, um, she's called Elam. So you're looking at different... Elam basically today is an alliance between Iran and Iraq. Okay. Those are the ancient peoples that had that territory. Yes. So <clears throat> where is USA protecting Israel. It doesn't really give you that. The inference at this point is that the United States, the way they're, they're thinking now, the United States is going to go to war to back Israel in a war with Israel, Hezbollah, Iran, and all these other nations getting together. It hasn't coalesced yet. The inference is it's not going to be allowed to happen. America is going to become very, very weak mm. to a point where she's not going to be able to do what she once was. And they're talking about that now. They said this, the army, the military is not what it was in the 90s. We can't back up our commitments now. So it could, have been, it could be a number of things. America might be d distracted into another theater of operations, the Pacific or Europe, where you have things going on there hot and heavy but the inference of scripture is that America is not going to have Israel's back the way that they think they are this is why uh, VH is intervening because Israel is going to be protected Israel is going to be covered in a way in which he will not be allowed to be radically damaged because the land is going to be preserved for the people to come back. Yes. So will it be even, we're probably there now, will we be so concerned about self we're not going to be able to assist Israel the way we have normally? <coughs> so we're going to, it's going to look as if we've changed our mind. Uh, that, and you're going to have uh, divisions here in America. You're going to have um, things which prevent America to be the global powerhouse that she currently is. So, Mr. Jones, you know Trump is definitely pro-Israel. Sure. He will do what he can do. Mm -hmm. But if he's prevented, then he can't do anything. So he's in the middle of a, a war within the government. If you have the deep state, which is causing division already in America, you have left and right. Yeah. You have states that are threatening to secede even now. If you have a, this thing like an eggshell cracking, America will not be able to sure. make its commitments. Sure. It's not going to improve. You have a civil war here. <clears throat> America is going to be trying to, to keep itself together and won't be able to have hegemony over the rest of the world. And the inference of scripture here is that um, Israel is going to come more and more under the protection of God rather than man. 
leading up to the point where judgment is going to be pronounced. If you look at just the things that are happening here in America now, we're being weakened morally. We're being weakened in a way in which pressures are taking place, internal pressures, mm -hmm. that are going to keep this nation divided. Uh, they're talking now about an economic uh, depression. If you have a depression here, you ain't going to be able to protect anybody. Millions of people are going to lose jobs, banks collapsing, all the rest of that. Uh, that, that takes us out of the equation. And um, a lot of the other nations as well. So the inference is you're going to have the West become greatly weakened through wars, attrition, internal conflicts. Israel uh, basically having to stand alone against these masked Arab nations that are being incited by Satan to wipe her out and YHVH intervening. He says, I'm causing my terror in the land of the living uh, against the ones that are causing terror against Israel. We just read a judgment mm -hmm. coming on Zidon here that uh, takes her out of the equation. When does the secular leadership, leadership of Israel recognize that it's been YHVH, well, it's Elohim by YHVH, protecting them? I think they don't. Ever. No. So they go to their graves believing that it, it was all them. Well, <laughs> what will happen is you're going to have a radical change there. Israel is going to, the land's going to be preserved. But just mm. like every other government, Israel's government is going to suffer as well. They haven't had, uh, they haven't been um, choir boys in this anyway. They, they're part of the deep state. Sure. So they're going to undergo radical sure. changes as well as the other governments. The land and the people basically are going to be preserved. But the changes that are going to be here uh, for the time in which the gathering takes place, these are things that are building up now. The land's got to be preserved. <clears throat> the people, <clears throat> you're going to have... You're going to have prototokas come out of Israel, just as well as you have them coming out of the other regions of the world. All of this is being prepared. The plan of Elohim is of priority importance. That's why these things are taking place. And the enemy's not going to be allowed to wipe things out. He's not going to be allowed to do what he wants to do. The deep state is only going to be allowed to go so far. Satan's going to be allowed to go so far until God's plan for the prototokas is completed. Right, but since we're reading that YHVH is doing certain things mm -hmm. until, and they will acknowledge me, meaning they know it's him. Mm -hmm. The point I'm making is, if they, mm -hmm. Pharaoh, Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, all those know it's him, YHVH, mm -hmm. then don't the secular leadership of Israel also know that it's YHVH? No, it doesn't mention anything about that. Mm. It mentions the enemies a lot. Curious. Is it because, Mr. Jones, now I'm, I'm thinking there's going to be a Messianic Jew presence there, but they're not going to be in government to give, no, a, give no, an understanding no. of where we're at in Scripture? No, it's going to be the people that become alerted, just like it's the people of the nations sure, here are going sure. to be alerted. Governments are corrupted. <clears throat> they got to be, they got to fall, all of them. And ev evidently what will happen is the people already over there the people are acknowledging YHVH right. in Israel. Right. And they're seeing miracles taking People are seeing angels over there already. Sure. But the deep state, even though, um, I'd say the deep state around the world, the globalist, mm -hmm. even though they are being directed by you know, principalities and powers and so on and so forth, do not recognize that if there are principalities, there must be God. They, they, they clearly don't you know, no, bring that no, into their, in their consciousness. No, they can't see it for mm -hmm. what it is. Uh, it wouldn't be allowed to. Sure. If you're if you're part of the deep state, you're going to see it from the perspective right. of how Sure. <laughs> so there is no spiritual. Then nobody. No. no. Which then, means there's a, a satanic based on what you're saying. A, there, there is a satanic aspect, and that's, that's it. it. So that brings us back to the understanding that when the fourth empire rises, 
those humans who are in those specific regions, their entire life, their entire consciousness is whatever that God is, is telling them. That's, that's, that's a, that's a full the warning. sum of total it. of right, their right. entire being. Right. Everything that they think, everything they believe is going to be governed by the dark side. But let's go on. Scripture indicates the collective judgments. And we're talking about the time of <clears throat> the uh, spoken judgment of Elohim. Scripture indicates collective judgments will come about as a result of the word of Elohim spoken upon the human race. Jeremiah 25 30. So, in other words, things are being kept in abeyance until Jeremiah 25 30. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, saying to them, The Lord shall roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread against all the inhabitants of the earth. So this is going to be the judgment in which everybody is going to be affected. Prior to this, you're not going to have a global effect of any any consequence. You're not going to have a global war that involves the whole human race. You're not going to have things that uh, are threatening the whole human race because that would undermine the judgment. They have to be preserved until the time of the judgment. You're going to have tremendous regional destruction, but not global destruction. Does that imply every region will have destruction? Every region is going to be in a state of upheaval. But not at the same time? No. Right. Collect, uh, 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 not collectively, separately. Right. They're going to be dealing. Like you guys, separately you have things happening in <clears throat> Europe. Mm -hmm. Separately you have things happening in the Middle East. Separately you have things happening in the Pacific regions. These are things taking place on a regional basis. Jeremiah 25.30 brings it all together. Now, Jeremiah 25.26. And all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, all the kingdoms of the world, which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. This, 26, is the pronouncement. When that pronouncement goes forth, every kingdom, government on the face of the earth falls. Israel, America, Germany, Japan, China, it all is going to collapse as a result of the judgment. How is that possible? Because the people that are running the governments are going to come under individual judgments. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them are going to be caught up in their own doings. No longer able to function, but struggling because they're being overwhelmed by an individual judgment. That is what this place is being preserved for. Turn to Luke, the 21st chapter. Luke 21, verse 35. <laughs> 
For as a snare shall it come on all, all, all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. All, all, all. If you're a deep stater, you're going to come under judgment. If you're somebody <clears throat> who is a uh, trafficker, you're going to come under judgment by the things you are doing in your own life. If you are a faithful and wise teacher, you are going to walk free to be allowed to do what you're going to do. The activities, lifestyle that you have engendered is either going to destroy you or it's going to free you. The Lord keeps saying the, the, the things that they do are engineering their judgment. What is the result? The result of this is Ezekiel 32, 17 to 18. Came to pass also in the twelfth year, in the fifteenth day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt, and cast them down, even her, and the daughters of the famous nations, unto the neither parts of the earth, with them that go down to the pit. This is Luke 21, 35. <coughs> the terrorist nations... <coughs> are going to be destroyed by their own activities. Some are going to be cast bodily into hell. Some are going to be killed by the sword and die and their spirits go to hell. Some are going to be basically brought out under a disease or under madness, num any number of things, the worldwide judgment. When the Lord speaks, it's affecting every single individual. So. That's going to be preserved until the time that the Lord speaks it. You're going to have this alignment of nations. You're going to have individual judgments come upon them to keep them from aligning on a global scale. And then Elohim is going to pronounce the judgment. We're all, everybody is going to be involved. Nobody is going to be isolated. It talks about from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth of the slain going to be because of wars, attrition, different things, nobody to bury them, uh, governments collapsing, the whole situation as a result of the pronouncement of judgment. Until that point, global destruction will not occur cannot occur, will not be allowed to occur. So what you're having now is the start of what Jesus talks about when you hear these things, don't be terrified. Well, people are being terrified. People are thinking, well, you know, this is going to be the end, they'll wipe everything out, atomic war. Everybody is going to come under the mushroom cloud. It's not going to happen. You're going to have tremendous destruction, but on a regional scale. You're already having that. Sure. You've got wars wiping people out all over the place. But I say this, an individual who puts his trust in the Lord, I don't care where you are, you're going to be preserved. Amen. We have a job to do. And God's going to preserve us and bless us. So that when this thing happens, we're ready. We can hit the ground running. You're going to see people all around you begging for your help. So you're going to be able to do anything about it. Maybe pray for them, but you're on the way. You're going to be called to go to a particular sure. place, do a particular thing. And you are not to look to the left nor to the right, but you're going to be transfixed on the time. The X, Y axis is crossed. What we're going to close is Matthew 24. Reminded of that verse, I think it's Elisha. I think sending somebody somewhere and telling them, if you 
come across somebody, don't greet them, don't say hello, stay on the path. That was the Lord. Okay. <laughs> don't stop to uh, greet anybody. Don't take any shoes for your trip, but you go where you're being sent. Matthew 24, verse 45 to 46. <clears throat> Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Which he says, after he says, be ready. So the faithful and wise servant is the, the, the pre, pre, prerequisite that he's ready. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? He's done this from eternity. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him rule over so all his goods. So the faithful and wise servant is ready to do what he's been called to do at the time that he's able to do it. When is he able to do it? When this filthy, false system that's restricting him falls, then he's released to go forth, and he's doing what he's been called to do. When the Lord comes, he finds him eagerly feeding the sheep, and the Lord will be delighted. Make him ruler over all his... This is, a, this is to me... I don't know how anybody else feels, but this to me is thrilling. Matthew 24, verse 45 to 46. 